In this video, we're continuing section 1.3 on exponents, and we are going to focus on rationalizing, so rationalizing denominators and numerators. So let's get into an example right away. So I want to rationalize the denominator of this fraction. Square root of 5 is, it's not a nice square root like square root of 9 or square root of 16 that simplifies to a, a, a nice value. It's an irrational number. Okay, so when I rationalize this thing, you likely have seen problems like at, like this before at some point in algebra, but what we do is we multiply the top and the bottom by the denominator, by that square root of 5. And the reason why that's nice is because now on the numerator, I get 1 times root 5, which is root 5. On the bottom, square root of 5 times itself, that's just 5. It gets rid of the square root. Okay, so now the denominator has been rationalized. It's a rational number. Okay, so this expression is... It's equal to the same thing as what we started, but it's in a form where the denominator is rationalized. Okay, so let's do this now for, for part B. We're going to up the difficulty a bit. So I'm first going to do this in an incorrect way, and then we'll try to fix it. So first, let's try to do the same thing I did in A. Multiply the top and the bottom by the denominator. In this case, it's the cube root of 5. So the problem with this is, well, when you multiply the denominators together, it doesn't cancel the root away. Like, so what exactly happens? Well, a cube root means I have a one-third power. So I have 5 to the one-third power times fi another 5 to the one-third power. And then I have to add the powers together. So that'll give me 5 to the two-thirds on the denominator. But a two-thirds power... It's a fractional power. It's still, there's still a root there because this 3 on the bottom means I still have a cube root. I haven't gotten rid of it. So unfortunately, that didn't quite work. So let's try to fix this. All right, so I'm going to rewrite what I have. And using this idea of exponent rules that showed up here, I'm going to rewrite the denominator first as 5 to the 1 third. And now I'm going to think about what happens. I'm going to think about what I would need to multiply this by on the denominator so that after I do the multiplication, I end up with something very nice in the denominator. So I want you to give the video a quick pause for about 30 seconds and see if you can identify what you'd need to multiply this by so that on the denominator ends up being really nice. Pause it in four, three, two, one. Pause it, quick 30 seconds, and see if you can figure out what goes on that denominator. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it. Let's bring it back and let's talk about it now. Okay, so... If I multiply it by 5 to the 2 thirds on the top and on the bottom, now that exponent property says, well, these exponents are going to get added together. So that's going to give me 5 to the 3 thirds on the bottom. On the top, 1 times 5 to the 2 thirds is 5 to the 2 thirds. So my numerator is 5 to the 2 thirds. And on the bottom, well, I get 5 to the 1, which is just 5 now. That's been rationalized. Okay, so awesome. So when I don't have a square root, rewriting it as this exponent will help me identify what to multiply the top and the bottom by to rationalize. Okay, the other type of situation we might see in a rationalization problem is like in part C. What if I have like a number like 2 and then either plus or minus a root, like square root of 5? Okay, so you might recall the technique from this, again, thinking back to maybe like algebra class. We multiply the top and the bottom by something called the conjugate. Multiply the top and the bottom by something called the conjugate. So the idea of the conjugate is, let me kind of separate this out from the previous part. I will multiply the top and the bottom by kind of the same thing. I got a 2, I got a root 5, but I change the sign. So this was a plus before. I'm going to change just that sign to a minus. So the same thing goes on the numerator, 2 minus root 5. So that is that is the conjugate of 2 plus root 5. It is 2 minus root 5. Okay, so when I do this multiplication on the numerator, well, 1 times something is just the something, 2 minus root 5. On the denominator, I'm going to have to foil everything out. So first I multiply the 2's together, so that'll give me 2 squared. Then I can multiply these outer terms together, so that gives me minus 2 times root 5, then the inner terms together, that's plus 2 times root 5, and then finally these last terms together, that'll be minus 
root 5 getting squared. Okay, so the nice thing about this, when I foil out multiplication with a conjugate, is these middle terms will end up canceling. That's what's really nice about it. Okay, so that leaves me with 2 minus root 5 on the numerator. On the bottom, 2 squared is 4, and then I got minus root 5 when I square it will cancel the root, and I'll be left with 5. Okay, so I end up with the denominator simplifies really nicely. It's just, well, it's negative 1 down there. And when you divide the top by negative 1, it's going to switch the sign of each of those terms. So I'll get negative 2 plus root 5. It simplifies really nicely to that. Awesome. So I've now rationalized that denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. Okay, so why does this kind of work? Why does this nice kind of cancellation happen when I multiply by the conjugate? So I'm gonna, I wanna talk about that over here. So when I multiply by the conjugate, I'm doing something like taking something plus something, an a plus b, and multiply it by an a minus b, just switch that sign. What happens when I do that in general? So if I FOIL this, I'll get a squared, multiplying those first terms together. When I do the outer ones and the inner ones, I'll get minus a b, plus a b, okay, and then when I multiply the last terms together, uh, that'll give me negative b squared. And with this, I can see that, well, the middle terms are going to cancel. Even in general, um, they're going to cancel. So that will just leave me with a squared minus b squared. And that's what I saw happening here. Um, I'll end up with this first term getting squared and then minus that second term getting squared. So in the future, when I multiply by the conjugate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leverage that fact that I'll just end up with this. I won't always do the full FOIL. Often I'll jump straight to this fact. Okay, all right, let's take a look at another example. For the next one, I wanna rationalize the numerator. Rationalize the numerator and then simplify this expression. Okay, so let's do that. Multiply the top and the bottom by something. So the numerator this time is where I got the square roots. It wants me to rationalize that. So the conjugate is square root of x, change the sign now, plus, and then square root of a. Same thing on the bottom, square root of x, and then plus, square root of a. So let's leverage the fact about what happens when I multiply something by its conjugate. This, this thing that I'm kind of noticing over here is, well, you'll end up with the first thing squared, and then minus the second term squared. That'll give me the first term was squared of x. It's going to get squared. And then minus the second term is going to get squared. Again, if you don't quite see how I got that, you could FOIL it out, all out like we did in the last problem. Okay, but you'll end up getting this on the numerator. On the denominator, I'm going to keep it as a minus x times that square root of x plus square root of a. And I'm just keeping it like that because... Um, the problem tells me uh, I'm going to have to simplify it and keeping it in this form on the denominator might help me see how something cancels in, in a, a little bit later in the problem. Okay, so now in the numerator, the square cancels these square roots. So I'm left with x and then minus a. On the bottom, I got that a minus x and then this other square root of x plus square root of a. And I noticed that, well, a minus x is very similar to x minus a, except the signs are kind of opposite. So to get this in a form where they are going to cancel, let's factor a negative out of this thing. So if I factor a negative out, well, the negative x becomes a positive x, and the a becomes a minus a. Okay, that's really nice. And then the other parentheses thing stays as it is, root x plus root a. But now I have an x minus a on the top, and an x minus a on the bottom, so they both cancel. And that'll leave me with one there and one there. Okay, so what we are left with after we do this cancellation is one on the top. I can pull this negative all the way to the front of the fraction. And then well, one time something is just the something. I get square root of x plus square root of a on the denominator. Cool. So you might notice that, wait, <laughs> rationalizing the numerator has put some roots on the denominator. But because the problem didn't say I need to rationalize the denominator, totally fine to, to have it in this form. One final thing that I need to include at the end of my answer is, 
there was when I did this cancellation, um, I got rid of one restriction in the problem. Because if I have a fraction, the denominator is not allowed to be zero. And when I did the cancellation, I've kind of removed one of those restrictions that could make the denominator zero. So I need to rem remember what that is. So this thing that canceled, when would that be equal to zero? Well, it would happen if x was equal to a. So I need to remember that, wait, x is not allowed to be equal to a. Because if it was, in the original problem, the denominator would have been zero, and that would have made it undefined. So anytime something like that on the denominator cancels away, I need to include the domain restriction that would have come from it. Okay, so that is my final simplified answer here. Okay, so I want to end this video by just quickly talking about well, when I have fractions, there's sometimes when I can cancel on the top and the bottom, but there's you know very common traps we can fall into where we incorrectly cancel, and I, and I want to point out one of those. So we can only cancel on the top and the bottom when the terms we're trying to cancel are factored out. So the thing's got to be factored out on the top completely and on the bottom completely. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So in this first one here, I can factor the numerator of it. Both of the terms have an a in common, so I can factor that out. That'll leave me with b plus c. And then I got over 4a squared. And at this point, the a on the top and the a on the bottom are factored out, and I can cancel them. But I want to do this kind of very, uh, very diligently to explain look, what's actually happening when I cancel. So I'm going to split this up now as a, I'm going to do what it splits this up as one fraction times another fraction. So in the numerator, I'll have a of the first one. On the second numerator, I'll have b plus c. And I'm also going to split up this denominator and move one of the a's over here. And that'll leave me with 4a at the bottom of this one. So it's the same thing as before. I'm just rewriting it. But now what's nice about this is, well, when I have a over a, something divided by itself, that's just 1. And if I multiply a fraction by 1, well, the 1 kind of goes away. It just leaves me with the other stuff. So that leaves me with b plus c over 4a. And that's actually the technical reason why canceling works. When I cancel something on the top and the bottom of the fraction, what I'm actually doing is I'm kind of creating a 1. And when that 1 multiplies the other stuff, I don't need to write the 1. It just kind of goes away. Okay, so well, let's compare this to the next fraction. I got a plus b. Uh, sorry, a times b plus c on the top over 4a on the bottom. So it's really tempting here maybe to see an a on the top and an a on the bottom and be like, wait, can I cancel those? But unfortunately, I cannot. This a on the numerator, it's not factored out of everything. Like I cannot factor it out of the c term. It's not part of that like it was in the previous problem. So in this one, we can't cancel the a's. So the things that I'm trying to cancel on the top and the bottom, they have to be factored out. Like they have to be multiplying everything else like this. And that does not happen in this other fraction down below. So that is something very important to watch out for.